All right, I got a special Christmas tree that I'm going to bring up to help me illustrate a point this morning. So today we're talking about the simplicity of Christmas and how, how uh, man, the message of Christ is really just simple and it's straightforward, but sometimes it gets messy and complicated and challenges come. So what I want to do at this point is kids and young people out there, can you guys help me figure out what is wrong with this Christmas tree? So I know some of you guys heard this already this morning in the first service, but help me out here. What's wrong with this, what's this Christmas tree? Toilet paper on it. That's a little weird, isn't it? Do you guys put toilet paper on your tree at home? Hopefully not. Yeah, it's like a little strange, right? What else? There's clothes hanging out of the Christmas tree. Is that normal? That's not supposed to happen. What else is wrong with this Christmas tree? There's a, there's a glove on top of it. Is that what normally goes on a Christmas tree? No, that's, that's all wrong. What else? Yeah, it's kind of like a blob of Christmas lights, right? It's, it's really messy, isn't it? It's a messy Christmas tree. It's kind of just all over the place. The ornaments are, are not right. Everything's look just in a blob, right? And it's chaotic, and it's crazy, and it's messy, and things aren't where they're supposed to be. How many of you feel like you could relate with this Christmas tree come holiday season? It feels like your life's like this Christmas tree. Like, it's just... It's a mess. It's crazy. There's challenges. There's things aren't where they're supposed to be. We don't even know why there's a glove on top of the Christmas tree, but that's what my life feels like right now, right? And yet this is the, this is the message of hope that Jesus gives us, that despite the fact that our lives sometimes reflect this during the holiday season, Jesus has hope for us, and he gives us hope this holiday season. Even if our life looks like this Christmas tree, kind of all of a mess. So, second thing that, that is a challenge for us during the holidays, and, and I was talking to my kids about this. Maybe your life isn't a mess. Maybe it, it looks put together. Uh, we were talk, my kids and I were talking about plants this week, and my wife loves to collect um, plants. And she, some, sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes she collects fake plants. This is not a real plant, right? This is a fake plant. You know why she does it? Because she loves the look of plants, but we can never keep the dang things alive in the winter. Is, are we the only ones on that, right? They die all the time. They just don't work. Fake plants, at least you get to enjoy them, right? And then over here, she planted this, I don't know, probably about a month ago. And uh, this is a plant that is alive, right? This is a real plant. And we were sitting at the breakfast table, and I was talking with my kids, and my, my four-year-old asked, Hey, Dad, what's the difference between a live and a real plant? He was like, well, I, which one's alive? He was like, well, what's the difference between something that's alive and something that's fake? And they gave three answers, and it was awesome. I want to share with you these. This was their words. The first one is the fake ones are stuck the way they are. They're stuck the way they are. Fake tree, fake plants, fake Christmas trees, they're stuck. The second one is they feel different. There's something that feels different about a fake plant than a real plant. And thirdly, the fake plants never grow. Yes. Right? They don't, they don't grow up into a beautiful flower. Man, I don't know about you, but as soon as I heard those answers, I was like, oh, that's a sermon right there. You guys got to preach that. <laughs> that's good, right? How many of you have, in your life have ever felt like a fake plant before? You're just going through the motions, but inside you feel stuck. You, it just feels different, and nothing's growing. Nothing's changing. Nothing's healthy is moving forward in your life. You just feel like maybe this holiday season, maybe you look good. Maybe you're not a mess. You look good. You got it all put together. But inside, you know there's just something not growing, right? There's something not happening in you. And, man, this is us. This is human nature, right? We either put on a show or we're, we don't put on a show and we're just a mess, right? Either way, we got problems, right? We need, we need Jesus to come and help us. And the cool thing is, is several thousand years ago, Jesus came as a baby and he grew up and he shared hope with us that we don't have to live the same way. And he offered hope. And in a conversation with Nicodemus all those years ago, he shared 
the verse that we just read on the screen, the verse almost everybody knows, John 3.16, and it's such a powerful verse. I want a kid. Is there a kid in this room that's got it memorized that could share it with us? Oh, man, hands all up again. You want to come up and share it with us? All right, come on up. We'll have you share us. John 3.16. It's the simplest, most profound verse. Most of you guys probably know it, and yet it has meaning for us this Christmas. Let's hear it. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life. Awesome. Give her a hand. All right, kids. That's it. It's the verse. Right? It's the, the simplest explanation of why Jesus came and what the purpose of this was for. He was born at, a, at Christmas. We don't celebrate that just because a baby was born. We, we celebrate it because he's the baby that brought us the good news. And that's that he came and he died for us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So whether, whether you feel fake put, going through the motions or whether you feel like you're a mess, Jesus came for you. Because that's the truth. He came for people then. And the people then, they were a mess, right? Jesus said, I've come for the sick. They, not, not the healthy. I, come for, I came for the sick because they, they know they need me, right? But then he also talked to the Pharisees, the people that were pretending to look good on the outside. And he had words for them, too. He wanted to see them all have hope during their, their challenges that they face. And that's exactly the same hope that we need today. Whether we're pretending or whether we're a mess, we still need hope as we go through life. So Jesus offers us four things, and I want to look at these from this verse. The first one is this, for God so loved the world. It's the first hunk of the verse, right? For God so loved the world. It's the part that we need to experience God's love. God loves you. In that verse, I've heard people say this. You should, instead of putting the world there, you need to put your own name in there. For God so loved Josh. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. We're going to talk about that in a second. But love... Without that love that Christ gives us, we would feel messy and, and fake, right? We need Jesus' love in our lives in order to do it. And what I love about this is Jesus loved the world. Think about that for a second. What does the world offer Jesus? Have you, have you looked at the news lately? What does the world offer Jesus? Not much, right? <laughs> in fact, we offer him the opposite. We offer him up terrible things and, and hurt and pain. And that's, that's what we give, right? The world is a broken and messy and fake place, and it's hard. And yet Jesus loved us. Jesus loved you in your mess. He loves you. Man, that's an amazing news. If, if you're wondering, man, this holiday season, I'm just not feeling it. It's not working for me. Man, Jesus, what you're missing is that love that Jesus gives you. And you know what? He doesn't tell us just to receive that love from him. He tells us to turn around and from the excess overflow to share it with everyone else, right? I was so proud of our church. Last week, we took 65 people Christmas caroling, and we went to the assisted living facility, and we stopped in at a bunch of shut-ins places. And I wish you guys could have seen. I got to walk up to each door and greet those people and Merry Christmas. I wish you guys could have seen the tears in their faces in their eyes as they heard you singing to them and sharing with them with no expectation of return the love that God has for them. They're not alone. They were feeling alone this Christmas. And you guys brought love to their door. And that's from that overflow that Jesus shares with us. It's so exciting that God loved us and now we get to go and love others. It's an amazing thing. God so loved the world. We gotta keep loving. If you're missing something this Christmas, if you're feeling dry and fake, going through the motions, if you're a mess, man, it starts with accepting God's love in your life and just being like, all right, Jesus, lay it on me. I need to feel that love this holiday season. And that's what it's all about. So we got to keep loving. Second thing is this. He said that he gave his one and only son. He gave. All right, kids in the room, can you guys say, he gave. Awesome. He gave. Jesus gave to you. And he gave exactly what was needed. How many of you guys love getting a Christmas gift for, for Christmas? Do you like getting presents? How many of you love giving presents? 
Same, th- same people, right? It's fun, isn't it? It's fun to give and receive. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He was a giver. And that's fun. We get to be part of that. We get to celebrate that. That's why we do presents at Christmas, right? Because it's a reflection of God. Like, man, when you're giving stuff, it's fun. It's that joy that wells up inside you as you watch your kids open presents or that you get to open a present. You get to share that joy because, man, that's just deep within us is a part of who we are, that God loves us and he's a giving God. And we get to be part of that too. He gave what was thoughtful, and most needed, exactly what was needed. I hope that we can be giving people this Christmas. Some of you are great at loving people and connecting, but maybe this holiday season you need to get more thoughtful with your gifts. I don't know about you, but I I struggle sometimes being thoughtful with my gifts. I, I remember my first Christmas with my wife, and I got her this box for her jewelry, and now looking back, I'm like, that was the worst gift I could have. She doesn't like jewelry. She doesn't use any of that stuff. And I just saw it on her face when she opened it. She's like, oh, cool, you know. But it was like, that was, you know, I didn't know. I just was like being a guy, a clueless guy, right? And so it wasn't a very thoughtful gift. I didn't know my wife like I know now, right? I didn't know what she wanted and what she appreciates, right? Man, God has has put so much thought and time into the gift of his son. He spent thousands of years telling us about it before it happened. And he he sent all these people since then to tell us about the gift of his son and how cool that is. It's such an incredible thing. We need to be giving people. If you're feeling fake, alone, going through the motions, if you're feeling a mess and you want to know how to change and make it better, we've got to be loving and we've got to be giving. That's, that's, those are the cores of who we are, right? And receiving from Jesus what he's given. And the third step is this, from this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him, it's just a simple faith, believe in Jesus. We have faith even when we cannot see what the next steps are. Now I realize some of us are going through some difficult things. And it's hard to look at our life and go, God, I'm in a mess, and I don't know how you're going to get me through this. I don't see your plan. I don't see what you're doing. But there's a moment in that where we have to go, you know what, but I trust you that you're going to carry me through this cancer. I trust you that this family division that's going on, that you're going to work through this in a way that brings us health these challenges that we're facing, you're going to go through that. There's an element of trust that we have to simply put our faith in him. Kids, can you all say believing? Believing. We need to keep believing. That's awesome. You guys going to repeat everything I say? That'd be, that'd be not good, right? We got to keep trusting God no matter what life throws at us. Keep believing that he's going to carry us through we got to keep loving. we got to keep giving. we got to keep believing. And last, we got to keep living. The last end of the verse says, but will not perish, but will have eternal life. Will not perish, but have eternal life. If we love, if we trust that God loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that if we believe in him, we won't perish, but we'll have eternal life. And what I love about this in the original language, when they wrote this, their verb tenses would have helped us see that this was a Starting today. This isn't, you will have eternal life someday. That's what it makes it sound like in English. But it's like, you will have eternal life. Starting today, you get eternal life. It's not a promise for the future. It's a promise for today. If we trust God and we experience his love and that gift that he's given us, and we trust in him, he will give you life today. You don't have to live like this plant anymore. You don't have to feel dry and fake inside. You get to live with life starting today. He can birth something new, just like this little bulb that was planted here not that long ago. It grew and became alive. We get to experience true and meaningful life if we put that faith in him and walk with him. And it starts today. We don't have to wait. Our faith and our trust in him can start today. It's an amazing thing. Let's pray as we move forward. Kids, you've been doing so good. Listen, let's fold our hands, close our eyes, take a moment with God. So God, help us as we 
keep loving this Christmas, as we keep experience giving, that we trust in you and we believe in you and that we will experience eternal life starting right now. We can experience true and meaningful and significant life. And God, you can clean up messes. God, I pray right now in this room, if there's anyone that hasn't put their faith in you for the first time, that they would do that right now. Just, just say to you, I trust you, God, and I'm following you with my life. Lord, I pray right now that you would have these people make that step of faith. And, and all of us, Lord, each day is a step of faith, trusting you that you're going to get us through whatever we're facing. We're going to keep trusting you in the midst of any challenge that we see. Lord, thank you for keeping us on the path as we follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, before you leave, I got, uh, I got to do this challenge card. Um, if you have uh, been with us the last month, you'll know that we've been challenging everybody to memorize Scripture. And uh, our Scripture verse this month is Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Uh, please grab one. We've still got a week left in December. really want to see you guys memorize this. And as a test... I'm going to try to say this. I, I did not do very well at the first service, okay? So I'm going to try this. Uh, Matthew 6, 31 through 33. I'm going to look one more time. Okay, here we go. Ready? So don't worry about what you eat, saying, nope, I messed it up. Don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? And what will we wear? For the pagans worry about such things. Oh, I'm already butchering. <laughs> Dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. I'm, I'm messing up in the other language. But your heavenly Father already knows that you need them. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. That was not good. Sorry, guys. But I want you to remember that memorizing scripture is so important. Having God's word in our life and chewing on those things, not just knowing them in our head, right? Any, any fake plant can do that but actually letting those scriptures go into our heart and, and plant a seed and helping us change and grow, okay? And so meditating on God's word, knowing what it says, and, and just thinking about how does that verse apply to my life this week? Grab a card there right on the table. We want you guys to know God's word and live it. Remember that God's word is powerful. Keep loving this week, keep giving, keep believing, and keep living. That's what Christmas is all about. You guys are dismissed. Thanks you so much for being part of our church service today.